Well, God bless you. Today, I want to do a short video about reading the Bible, because all of us Christians should be reading the Bible regularly, getting to know it. After all, the Bible is the only book that God authored. In other words, you know, you look around my library behind me and around, I mean, I've got thousands of books. I would imagine in libraries have millions of books. There, it, back in Ecclesiastes, it says that there was a lot of books already written. And yet there's only one book that is authored by God. It's the Word of God. And God speaks to us through that book, and He guides us through that book. And so it's very important that you and I get to learn it. So I want to talk about number one, planning, number two, reading for enjoyment, and number three, reading to learn what's in there. Now, in any case, whether we're reading for enjoyment or whether we're reading to really learn what's in the Bible, we should understand the value of it. If you look at the, the life of Jesus Christ, and you know he's, he's our best role model. Now, you could read the writings of Paul and get the same thing, or even of Peter, for example. But when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, how many times did he say, it is written when he was instructing people, when he was correcting people, even when he was challenged by the devil. He kept, he kept bringing up, it is written. And he understood the value of knowing the word and then using the word of God in your daily life. And so the first thing I want to talk about then is planning to read. And <laughs> I've talked to so many people that just say, well, I don't read well. I don't like to read. I, I understand that. And there are ways that that can be overcome. And actually, if you have some kind of disability, um, something like that, there are programs that will read the Bible to you. And you can get the Bible that way. In fact, there are some of the translations on audio where it's actually a whole stage full of people and they all read in different voices. So you get kind of a 3D effect, if you will. But people can, can listen to the Bible if they can't read it. By the way, that's especially hand, handy if you don't have a lot of time, but you have a long commute, say, to work. That, you know, that part of that commute could be listening to the Bible being read to you. Because, again, we want to get to the point that we learn the Bible to where it becomes, you know, as handy to us as it was to Jesus Christ. And it's helpful to us in the guidance that it provides as it was to Jesus Christ. And so one of the things is plan. Generally speaking, people who don't make a time to read the Bible, don't read the Bible. They, 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 they don't get around to it. <laughs> One time there was something in my life, I can't even remember how many, this is so many years ago now, I can't even remember what I wasn't getting around to, but I told the person that, well, I just, I just can't seem to get around to it. And so the, the person showed up later with one of these. This is around to it, <laughs> and they're easy to make. So if you can't seem to get around to it, make one for yourself and then you have a round to it and then you can put it on your calendar. Of course, I'm sort of making a joke, but the point is that, that we've got to put uh, reading the Bible on our calendar. We've got to make time for it because if we wait until the end of the day and we're all tired and blurry eyed and that kind of thing, then it, it just doesn't really work. Sometimes you may need to carve out special time during the morning or during a weekend when you can spend time reading the Bible. Now that being said, now you've made time to read the Bible and you're reading the Bible and a lot of people just simply read the Bible for enjoyment. They're just gonna read through. It doesn't really matter to them whether they actually learn it or not, or learn the places or learn the people. And there's nothing wrong with what we would call devotional read reading. You, you read a little section and it helps you that day uh, and you do devotional reading. And certainly a lot of people do that and it's very helpful to do that. And praise God if you do. I'd like to take it a step further though that there is great value because Jesus Christ may have done devotional reading. It doesn't specifically say, but I can guarantee you he read to learn the Bible. 
learn it, learn what it said, learn what it meant, uh, learn the people in the places so that he could utilize it as we see him utilize it in the scripture where he would, in different situations, he would say, as it is written, as it is written, as it is written, and he would be able to apply the Bible because it is the word of God. So, <laughs> you know, God backs up his word. So when it comes to reading the Bible to really understand it, there's, there's some things we want to do. There's some things we ought to do. One thing that I do regularly is I have some kind of notebook with me when, when I read. I have pieces of paper, sticky notes, or a notebook around because it's amazing how often, you know, and I've been doing this for over half a century, and it's amazing how often that I'll be reading in a book. Let's say I'm reading in one of the prophetic books like Isaiah or Hosea, and I'm, I'm reading and I see a verse that it's like, wow, I've just never understood that verse that way before. And if I just keep reading, uh, then I'll think, now what was that verse? <laughs> but if I just take a second and jot down on a piece of paper, this just happened to me the other day actually. And I thankfully I jotted down on my piece of paper what the verse was and then at the at the end of my reading session I was like oh I want to go go back and recapture that and then there was the verse right there and I looked it up and so as you read the Bible you have profound thoughts you learn things you get insights you have verses that you think oh I need to tell this verse to this person that kind of idea it's so helpful if you just jot those down in the moment it's wonderful Another thing we need when we're going into Bible study is we've got to have the right kind of mental attitude. Now, what do I mean by that? <laughs> well, you know, I'm old enough that, that I was in the Bible reading game when computers and computer games first started coming out. And if any of you are my age and remember that, there was uh, way back, I, I would say this would have to be in the, even in the late 70s, maybe early 80s, something like that, there was a push to make Bible games. But, you know, people were starting to use the computer, starting to play things like Pac-Man and other things on the computer. And they were playing games and they were enjoying it. And, and Christians had the great idea, well, we'll do Bible games on the computer and then people have fun learning the Bible. Well, there aren't, there aren't those around anymore. And why? Well, one, they, they never really worked well. And they never really worked well for a good reason. Learning the Bible isn't entertaining or isn't entertainment. It can be entertaining at some level. But, you know, people that you sit down to watch a TV show and they've designed that specifically to kind of come out at the t of the TV at you. It comes at you and you, you get entertained in spite of yourself and they weave things into the plot so you, if you're, you know, a frequent TV watcher, you kind of see the plot develop. You can almost guess what's going to happen before it happened because they set it up that way. <laughs> well, that's not the way the Bible is. The Bible takes energy. It takes effort. You, it's, it's learning. And something else about it, you know, some people, I talk to some people that say, I've been reading the Bible for years and I don't really understand it. That's a, that's a great, you know, listen to that. I've been reading for the Bible for years and I don't understand it. That's so common. And here, if, if you, let's say you're reading a section, say in the Gospel of Mark, and you read a section of the Gospel of Mark and you don't understand it. Well, guess what's gonna happen next time? <laughs> you're not gonna understand it the next time either, probably. So what you've gotta do is, as you're reading, you've got to push yourself to understand what did this, was this, what does this mean? Where I, am I geographically? Where did this happen geographically? What time period is it in? Who are the players? So we ask ourselves questions, and there's, there's things that help with the study. One is some kind of Bible atlas. This is one I use a lot. It's the Oxford Bible Atlas. It's got a lot of nice maps, and you, it's got a gazetteer in the back so you can find places if you read about a place in the Bible. Here's another Bible atlas that's superb, the, the Satellite Bible Atlas by Bill Schlegel. 
this is a superb piece of work and you're reading along and it, it mentions like, for example, even a simple thing like the parable of the Good Samaritan, that this man went from Jerusalem to Jericho. If you in your mind can't go and say, where is Jerusalem? Where is Jericho? How far apart is that? What kind of walk are we talking about? Is it uphill, downhill, that kind of thing? Then you grab an atlas and you learn and then you're like, okay. And once you get a picture in your mind, this is important because you and I tend to think of pictures. Like if I say the word cow, I bet you don't see C-O-W up in your head. You see the mental picture of a cow because our brains are designed to think in pictures. And so if you have a picture in your mind, oh, that's what the temple looks like. Oh, that's what, where Jerusalem is on the map. Oh, that's where Jericho is on the map. Then it's a lot easier to remember. So having a Bible atlas is really helpful. So now we, we read the Bible when we're serious about it. We've got our little notebook. We have a Bible atlas next to it. And you know, a lot of Bibles that people read are, are these big study Bibles, and they can be amazingly helpful. They have little introductions. They have notes on difficult verses. Some of them have maps in the back. They can be amazingly helpful. What's the point? The point is that when you read the Bible, you have to make up your mind ahead of time that I'm going to learn what I'm reading. I'm, I'm not going to read it then walk away and 10 minutes later say some, somebody says, well, what did you read this morning? Well, I know I was in the Gospel of Mark, but frankly, I don't remember what I read or I don't understand it anyway. See, we don't want to be in that position. We want to, because the knowledge builds. You start with very little knowledge. If you're at the bottom of the learning curve, you start with very not little knowledge. So you're not reading much before you're learning things that are important. I remember when I used to teach Old Testament history at the Way College and the <laughs> the, kids, the kids in the class would come to me and they'd say, you know, so, because yeah, we'd have tests, obviously, you're in a class, then you, 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 know, you lecture for a while, and then after a certain number of days, you have a test. And the kids would come and they'd say, you know, um, the students, you know, is this test cumulative? And I'd always kind of chuckle at that and think, well, what part of the Bible are you thinking it's okay to forget? <laughs> if we've taught something in the first part of the class and now we're in a different section, you, you can't just say, well, I, you know, hey, that's over, so I forgot that part of the Bible. <laughs> so, you know, the, the Bible is a cumulative test. If you, if you take time and you read Genesis, when you read Exodus, you're supposed to remember what's in Genesis, you know. So anyway, these are my words of encouragement because the Christian world would be a lot better off if people would pay attention to the Bible and really read it and really get to, to know it. So plan and have your helps with you. And it's fine to read for enjoyment. It's fine to do devotional reading. But make sure you do some study that's designed to have you learn the Bible. Then, like Jesus Christ, when you get into life situations, you will be able to say, like he did, it is written. God bless you. Hey, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Click the subscribe button below to follow us and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified when new videos are posted. And please check out our website for additional resources at spiritandtruthonline.org. And if you were blessed by this video, please consider donating to our work. Just click the donate button. And may God bless you as you grow in your walk with the Lord.